Hey, what's up, guys? Ready for a little D&D? &D, little Dungeons & Dragons? No. Alright, me neither. Uh, so, what'd you think of Stranger Things Season 4? Awesome season, right? Yeah. So I want to talk about and review the movie, or set of movies that inspired the main villain to that uh, show. Uh, we all appreciate the little cameo from uh, Robert England. That was a nice touch. Uh, but when I think of slashers... You think of the, you know, the big mess of slasher movies and all the titans that play in there. Whether it be Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, let's throw Pinhead from Hellraiser in there, why not? Leatherface. Um, but the thing with Freddy Krueger, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street is, yeah, sure, you could, run from, you could run from Freddy, but he's going to show up in your dreams. But you're mess, you know, vulnerable and relaxed. He knows all your secrets, so it's pointless, right? Uh, he's a tough cookie to beat, and, you know, it's, it's hard to just kind of sum up all, because he's, you know, he plays the same character through all the Nightmare on Elm Street, um, you know, ep uh, sequels and whatnot, but, um, I mean, my personal favorite is one, three, uh, Freddy's Dead, and the one I'm about to talk about now. I guess Freddy vs. Jason. You know, is that a Freddy movie, Jason movie? Whatever. Um, anyway, uh, one that I think it's overlooked a lot um, would have to be A New Nightmare. You know, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, for whatever reason, it's overlooked. I don't know. I don't hear people talking about it that much. I think it was fine. And it's one of those movies where it's like a movie within a movie, okay? Uh, all the, the cast plays themselves sometimes. And you can get weird i guess people would turn off by that i like i think it's cool um but it was very serious you know um yeah i remember going to the theaters and seeing it it came out in 94 but i don't remember seeing it in 94 maybe 94 is when it was completed and it was released 95 98 i don't know anyway uh i remember seeing it on the big screen and it was awesome but you have all familiar characters Familiar cast coming back. Robert England playing Robert England and Freddy. Um, Heather Legenkamp playing, you know, I mean, from Nancy from the, you know, previous films, playing herself. Uh, Wes Craven being Wes Craven, you know, pretty much, who also directed it. For, he did a phenomenal job, I think. Um, but yeah, so basically it's Wes Craven pitching an idea of bringing another nightmare film. And, you know, Heather's like, eh, I don't know, you know. Meanwhile, a bunch of weird stuff's happening. She's getting these nightmares. Her uh, husband's like a, an effects guy or an actor who's in the upcoming, you know, Freddy, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street films. And something always tragic happens. And something does happen. And she's trying to tell Wes Craven about Wes Craven. And saying, oh, hey, look, you know, these things happen. She's trying to get in touch with Freddy, uh, Robert England. You know, and he's kind of giving her the run around too. And she's coming to the conclusion that maybe, just maybe, Freddy is real. And he's coming out into this, you know, in her reality. And to make matters worse, her kid, her son, is kind of being the target of this. And it's, it's crazy. It's madness. And, you know, she has to have, kind of get all those wits that she acted, you know, all, you know this tough girl attitude you know she has to make that real again and because freddie is uh, relentless in this picture he's, i think he's brutal the way he's i love the the new glove i remember spencer's selling a version of that you know you put it on your hand pretty cool uh like i said the, the whole trench coat kind of i think he, i believe he had like a, like a top hat or some kind of hat brim um it was very menacing put it that way and i think it was a very good look to reintroduce Freddy Krueger. Uh, serious Freddy Krueger at that. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't no jokes cracked around this. Because, you know, the theme, like I said, was very... It was your whole reality was being uh, tormented. This thing that you think was made up in a screenplay is coming to life to get you. And you're not from You know, does the movie... That you've you know previously played in help you out in this situation. So you know Heather's like doing all these things and the, you know, tries to convince herself and does whatever she can to save her family or what's left of her family, pretty much. 
But yeah, like I said, um, you, you got John Saxon, who played her dad in the original. He came back in this to play himself and, you know, give her advice and all that stuff. It, it, it was fun. Um, like I said, I really appreciate this movie. I thought it was, I thought it was an excellent ride. And, you know, if you guys are tired of Freddy, uh, go back, give it a second chance. Especially this one, too. Like I said, not every, you know, Freddy Krueger film is meant to be taken serious. Obviously, it kind of became a joke in the sequels. But it's good. I mean, he's icon he's an icon for a reason, uh, Freddy Krueger. I was I I had the, the great opportunity to meet um, John Saxon at a convention, in passing anyway. Um, Heather, I'm actually I autographed picture with Robert England, um, and it's cool. And when you meet these people, it's like you know you, you come up with all you grew up watching their movies, but when you get to the table, you're like, you know, <laughs> your mind blanks. Like what the heck, you know. It happens, you know, but whatever. Um, like I said, this one I think stood out, and I think it's a really good sequel. You know, uh, we don't talk about the remake uh, of Nightmare on Elm Street. I refuse to, so I'm not. Um, but I think Freddy versus Jason kind of kind of put the nail in the coffin for both franchises. Even though Friday the Thirteenth got re remade too, and it's. I don't know, it's like, it, it was going through like a rights battle in court, now it's settled, so I don't know what's going on with that franchise. Um, but, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street will always stand out, and I think it's totally, especially this one, Wes Craven's new Nightmare, just because it has uh, the late and great Wes Craven's touch to it. Uh, he brings that serious attitude back. Freddy Krueger is reinvented, reimagined, and menacing as ever. And if you like the original, you'll definitely like this. You could probably watch this one, the third one, and uh, New Nightmare as like one three-hour long movie. Or just watch this one. But anyway, uh, I definitely recommend uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. It's a very serious take. It's a reality break. Not a, so much as a, of a fourth wall breaking, but a reality breaking film that brings fantasy and reality dangerously close together. And real actors' lives are put in jeopardy. Not in real life, but for the film's sake. And I think that's it's very entertaining and, you know, makes you think, like, huh, you know, what if? But, um, nonetheless, I think it was a great entry. It was very fun and a good way to reintroduce Freddy Krueger back. Um, it's very serious, uh, Freddy Krueger. And, uh, you know, just seeing Robert England with a new look it's just you know it's very iconic so please do yourself a favor rewatch it if you haven't you know um watch it on commentary it's got an excellent commentary from Wes Craven and uh, I wish the guy was still around still giving us good entertainment but he left behind a great legacy and you know uh Wes Craven is definitely not to be forgotten I mean not just for Nightmare on Elm Street but you know many films he did that are just classics uh, but yeah, that's all I got to say. Uh, thanks for listening, and I uh, hope you guys are being nice to each other and all that jazz. See you all very, very soon.